My name is Ulimon Pokiak, but some of my classmates used to call me Fatty Legs. They called me that because a wicked nun forced me to wear a pair of red stockings that made my legs look enormous. But I put an end to it. How? Well, I'm going to let you in on a secret that I have kept for more than 60 years. The secret of how I made those stockings disappear. When I was a young girl, outsiders came flitting about the north. They plucked us from our homes on the scattered islands of the Arctic Ocean, back to nests they called schools in Aklavik. Three times I had made the journey to Aklavik with my father across the open ocean to buy supplies. I was mesmerized by the spectacle of the strange dark cloaked nuns and the pale skinned priests who traveled across different oceans from far off lands. They held the key to the greatest of the outsider's mysteries, reading. My father pulled open the door and I stepped past him. I was inside a school for the first time in my life. All around me was glass and wood. An outsider with a hooked nose like a beak came for me. I'm glad you come to your senses, she told my father. You certainly cannot teach her the things she needs to know. She wrapped a dark cloak around my shoulder and ushered me away without giving me a chance to say goodbye. I looked back at my father who was wiping tears from my mother's face. I wanted to run to her to tell her everything would be all right, but a priest had approached them right then and they walked away with him. I followed the beak nun upstairs that creaked under my feet to a large room filled with beds. Across the room were seven girls. A big, dark cloaked nun passed by, eyeing them up and down, one by one. She clutched a pair of shears. Catching a fir firm hold on one of the girl's long braids, the nun snipped it off with a clean slice and let it fall to the floor. She hid her face in her hands as the second braid was cut. The sound of shears severing thick, black, gray hair drowned out the howls of the disgraced girls. She stopped directly in front of me. I stepped back from her heavy cross, which nearly struck me in the face, but she yanked me back by one of my braids. I can fix my own hair, I protested, but she pulled tight, and with the same motion a bird makes, pulling a piece of flesh from a fish, clamped the shears of my braid and severed it. The other fell to the floor to meet the first, and I joined the other girls in their weeping. There we stood, sobbing, and the humiliation of our discarded hair. The smile shrank from my face as I squeezed into the small desk she pointed me to. The raven rose from her feet, motioning for me to stand. I rose to my feet, but how was I to read? I didn't even know which page to turn to. The raven cocked her hip and tapped a foot. Well, my cheeks felt hot. I looked around me from child to child. Their faces stared back, blank, waiting, as my stockings began to slide down my calves. I returned to the dormitory one Saturday night in April after an evening of the Raven's education. My raw fingers stung as I opened the door to an explosion of excitement. New stockings! Aren't they beautiful? I stripped off my old ones and threw them into the pile, praying for a nice black pair. The nun had played a heartless trick on me. Embarrassment and anger swelled within my heart. They're, they're red! The raven cackled as I ran to my bed. It was bad enough that I was much larger than the other girls. But now I had to wear the only bright red stockings in the school. For the next few days, the other girls made sounds like the heavy beat of a drum when I walked by. They could go ahead, 
and have their laugh at my expense. It would be short-lived. The time had come to put my plan into action. Each morning, as I pulled up those red stockings, my spirit rose. On Sunday, my last day in the laundry room, I looked around to make sure I was alone. I stripped off the stockings, and with one quick motion, I shoved them into the blazing fire beneath the vat. I would not be bested. The raven was about to see what I was made of, and was she ever in for a shock? The raven thought she was there to teach me a few things, but in the end, I think it was she who learned the lesson. Be careful which birds you choose to pluck from their nests. A wren can be just as clever as a raven. Yeah.